You know, the terrible bombing in Oklahoma City 11 days ago ripped at the hearts of all of us here in America and across the world. But amidst the chaos and tragedy, a group of Russian figure sk skaters has discovered what is best about this country. In a small Oklahoma City parking lot last Thursday, skaters from the Russian Ballet on Ice tour came to reclaim pieces of their tattered lives. Cherished possessions had been lost in the horrific bombing. But the skaters understand they are lucky. What they may never understand is how they landed in this predicament. The Russians first came to Oklahoma City in September of last year. The skaters were only here to train temporarily before heading to Denver for what was supposed to be the start of a nine-month U.S. tour. But they never made it. Seven tumultuous months later, the Russians are still here, stranded in Oklahoma City. The Russians lost financial backing for their proposed tour when a California investment group dropped out at the last minute. Abandoned in Oklahoma, the Russians were forced to shuttle from one accommodation to another. Twelve times they moved. They never thought of returning home. The skaters believed a tour of the U.S. was the last chance to change their lives for the better. In March, they found a home on the top floor of the downtown YMCA. In the shadow of the Alfred P. Mura Federal Building, the producer for the Russian Ballet on Ice, Mikhail Balusov, could only wonder if his skaters would ever find another sponsor. On the morning of April 19th, the skaters were here on the seventh floor of the YMCA building, waiting to be picked up and taken to an ice rink to practice. At 9.02 a.m., just minutes before the scheduled pickup time, the windows of the YMCA were blasted away, and the Russian troop witnessed a horror they'll never forget. The explosion sent six of the skaters to the hospital with mild injuries. But 21-year-old Ina Svetacheva saw the carnage on the streets. The faces of the kids, she says, that's what hurts the most. The children don't deserve this. Why them? Homeless again, the Russians were embraced by Melanie Hemry, the woman who had come to pick them up that awful morning. Sixteen skaters now live with her family. We had been bombed. These were kids from a foreign country who were scared and hurt. And all I could think of is, if I were in their country and this happened, dear God, I would want somebody to help me. Hemry's friends and neighbors have united to help the displaced Russians. Every day, enough food is brought for 75 meals. I feel joy doing this. That's what makes yes. me happy. I love these people. <laughs> And this is one way for all of us to deal with our emotions because there's so many people that are grieving that if we can put our grief to work, it's not quite as hard to deal with. And Oklahomans have stopped by to show Mikhail and his skaters another side of America. There are just no words to express how grateful we are, says Valery Prudsky. These people have done so much, who could imagine doing all this for Russians? Prudsky suffered the most serious injuries in the group. Doctors were forced to pull glass out of his throat. The Hemrys have provided a haven for Prudsky and his 15 comrades. The skaters still dream of making it in the USA. At night, they often watch some of their old performances. Imagine your biggest wish coming true, Valeri says. That's what it would mean for us to show all of America what we can do on the ice. But while the Russians are eager to tour the country, Melanie Hemry and her fellow Oklahomans don't want to say goodbye to their new friends. I said um, to them, I said, and now you're in my heart so big that when you leave, my heart, my home will fill empty. An Oklahoma City charity organization has donated seven apartments to the Russians rent-free for the next two months. And this weekend, the troop is saying goodbye to the Hemry home, a home they will never forget. Meantime, the search for a tour sponsor continues.